And here we are at the Hollywood Collectibles event in Rosemont. And here is Mia St. John, who just happens to be here. Hi there. We're going to wander over to her table and see all the, the goodies that there are. That looks like the knockout workout book. That looks like a pair of boxing gloves. This could revive interest in boxing real, real easily. That. A little Playboy, never hurt anybody. And then we have the WBC International Female Champion belt. And here we have the real thing. And how are you? <laughs> I'm doing well, thank Good. you. And you're, you're training for your next bout by signing autographs. Is that how this well, works? Th this is how the business of boxing works. <laughs> We're business people, actually. Okay. So, yes. <laughs> now, you do have a fight coming up in October. I have a fight coming up October 16th in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And knock on wood, this is my last fight. Okay. Never to again walk in that room. <laughs> Wait, isn't, that, isn't that what you said last time we uh, saw one another? That's what I've been saying for seven years now. <laughs> so, here I am. <laughs> well, some, something keeps drawing you back to the ring. Yes. M El dinero. <laughs> that, that works. And here you are with your this is book. This new book, The Knockout Workout, and it's in stores now. Can you tell and us a little bit about that? Yes, it's a three-part book um, based on mental health nutrition and fitness it's a lifestyle book it's not a diet book okay so I, don't, I don't believe in diets is it an exercise book it's a lifestyle yeah. book so it focuses on not just exercise but how you eat okay. nutrition and how to stay mentally healthy because without mental health there cannot possibly be physical health okay it, it starts from the neck up it really does because if you have like anxiety, depression, um, psychosis, all of that can lead to a lot of physical ailments. Um, you just described some of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, Not you, me. Well, you know, one out of four people will suffer from a mental illness, but it's probably more like one in two if you count for anxiety, depression, sure. things like that. <laughs> so this will teach me how to overcome being uh, anxious about coming here to talk to you. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> See, I, I, I've conquered that. <laughs> and I'm certainly not depressed being in this environment. So, you're also involved in other mental health issues, <laughs> initiatives? Well, right. Um, Congresswoman Napolitano is uh, trying to get a bill passed right now. It's a mental health bill. Um, to, right now, they have it in, I believe, 11 schools in LA County. And they're trying to get it nationwide, um, which is a, a great bill. Um, it's uh, to put mental health education into the school system and provide help for kids, um, such as um, counselors, someone to go to if you're feeling, say, anxiety, depression, um, like I said, even psychosis. Um, any of those symptoms, um, I would strongly urge any child to go find help. And if there's not help at the school, then go to your, your family physician. Um, talk to anyone that you can. Because it seems you may, you may feel those emotions when you're a kid and you don't know what to do, and it's not until you're an adult that you realize... I, sh I should have had it taken care of, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago. It, it's not like, okay, I've got a sore throat or I get a headache and you go to the doctor right. and your parents say, oh, well, we'll take you to the doctor. This is a little more insidious and it, you know, it, it sort of is there. And as a child, you don't know what to do. You think, okay, maybe, maybe this is normal. People are always crying or Depressed. Right, and there's such a stigma with mental illness anyway. It's very difficult for, especially in the Latino culture, where it's it's hard for us to accept mental illness. It's hard to see uh, men 
Latinos say, oh, I'm feeling depressed, you know, I'm feeling sad. It's just not, it's, it's un machismo to say that. Um, and then a lot of the, the symptoms that the kids might feel, you know, it, it's, it's hard to diagnose because you're not sure whether these are hormones, um, whether it's just, you know, being a teenager. I mean, we just don't know. That's why it's so important to seek help. Um, because oftentimes this can lead to drug use, suicide, um, crime, and a lot of uh, these illnesses, you won't even have your first break until age 17, 18, 19. But you do see signs younger than that, right. and it's important to look for these signs. Now, one of the people who's aligning with you in this effort is Ron Artest of the Lakers. Well, actually, he's not um, with me. Ron Artes is supporting Napolitano's bill. Okay. Um, and he is talking to schools, uh, to kids, and so he is um, an advocate of mental health. You know, he's, he's one I've of... I've never met him. <laughs> okay. Well, he's one of the few active athletes who comes out and says, okay, I've been to see a psychiatrist, and I think that's a bold step. You know, when he was here playing with the Chicago Bulls, people thought he was crazy, which, to, in a certain definition, he may have been. But now that he's getting help, okay, right, that's I mean, a positive you know, step. I, I, I hate using the term crazy because that would mean that I'm crazy. Um, Are, and, and aren't just, we all, right? And, and I think, yeah, we all are to a, a certain degree. Um, we all have mental health issues. Like I said, even depression and anxiety, which is so common, um, is in a lot of us. Um, obviously, there are more severe mental illnesses, but um, even depression is considered a mental illness. So I hate to say that we're crazy. Okay. We just have uh, problems in life and living. Right learning how to cope which is everybody yes and so this book will teach us how to cope so this book will teach you how to cope through nutrition fitness and obviously mental health like meditation learning to uh, take time for yourself um, and if that doesn't work you can just hit somebody over the head with it exactly <laughs> okay we'll get away from all this how do you stay in shape well, I stay in shape through my book, The Knockout Workout. It's, um, I'll, really, buy, I'll buy five copies right now. <laughs> I actually, I mean, I work out every single day. Um, I, can t I take a day off once in a while, but I look at it like it, it's, it, it must be habit. Um, and you don't have to work out hours and hours and hours a day. Um, but you do have to make it a habit. And it has to be something like brushing your teeth, something that you just wake up and do every day. You don't ask yourself, well, should I, do I have time? You make time, even if it's just 10 minutes, it, you make time. So you're in fighting shape? You ready to go? Always in fighting shape. <laughs> <laughs> Pro professional fighting shape, not just, you know, oh, slapping me around. Oh, definitely in professional fighting shape. Ever tempted to say, okay, after I finish my boxing, I'll, I'll be a trainer or promoter or anything like Never. that? Never. It's like, when, when you're done, Never. you're done? When I'm done, I'm done. Um, boxing was a great vehicle to take me to my real purpose in life, which is my nonprofit and my work on mental health. Um, boxing, it, to me, is just it's so insignificant compared to what I want to do with my nonprofit. Um, and the Playboy cover was just another one of those steps along the way? It, the Playboy was I mean, it, just like boxing. It's, it's a business. It, it, it was all a business to, um, to support um, what I really want to do. Without my boxing career, I wouldn't be put in the public eye. I wouldn't have the chance to be helping others, to be helping kids, to reaching out to Latinos. I, I wouldn't have that ability. So um, the boxing, the playboy, those were all great, great vehicles to take me to my true purpose in life. But to be a trainer, I, I would never be an advocate of boxing. I, I don't want people to go into boxing. I want them to go uh, get an education. Um, 
I'm a college graduate, and that's what I promote, is, is a higher education. Um, not getting in the ring and, and uh, destroying brain cells and, you know, destroying your life. I'm trying to, to do the opposite, to encourage kids to go in the opposite direction. Well, thankfully, you have enough brain cells left, you know. But, but the Playboy did give you good exposure in, in more ways than one. It was great, yes. And, you know, financially, I mean, who could complain? It's, it was if they great. came back to you today and said, hey. Oh, of course, we're considering a Mexico Playboy right now. And if the money is right, we'll, we'll do Mexico Playboy. So, um, you know, we live in a... In a, this is a if you do that, could you get me a copy? Yes. <laughs> You know, people like complain that while I I used certain things to get me to the top of my boxing career, but they forget that we live in a capitalist country, and and that's what capitalism is all about. And I'm not saying that capitalism is a perfect system. In fact, it's far from it. Um, I grew up in a socialist family, so. I still have those views, uh, but nevertheless, we live in the United States, and, and I had the right to do to make the most of my career. Okay. So far, so good. <laughs> we'll keep our fingers crossed about uh, Playboy Mexico. Yes. We'll, we'll keep our eyes open and wish you nothing but the best. Thank you so much. Thank you.